Clippers give it to Black again, and nothing doing at all this time. Trying to spring something. Uh, Huskies coming up field awful hard, trying to kick out that end. And, uh, not surprising the Huskies one bit, as they're able to play effectively with eight men on the line of scrimmage and just taking those corners and playing man-to-man -man all day long. And uh, the Cougars not showing much interest in, in trying to go to the air and, and hurry things up. One guy we haven't talked about a lot, David Knuff. Thought he might be a little more involved in the offense. He's not on the field now. Four wide receivers, black in the backfield, out of the shotgun. Leaf gets rid of the ball. We got a penalty flag being thrown. It's going to be pass interference one way or the other. May be a pick on the Cougars as they do that little crossing route that Sean McWashington may be called of uh, going out, setting the screen. That's what I kind of thought was going to happen there. Officials discussing things and saying, uh, how are you going to get home tonight? Holding. Well, goes the other way. So much for you guys thought, huh? A yeah, little bit well, of holding. Up. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't see his etch a sketch from up here. <laughs> so uh, the penalty once again comes in at a timely moment for Washington State, and that's been the third penalty for a first down, and, and that's been about it today. Holding. Defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So they'll march it out to the 45-yard line. I don't know about you, Sonny, but the shotgun for me so Ryan Leaf can take a look at what's going on. Well, that last play, he wasn't close on the pass either. It's because the receiver was held, though, Sonny. First and 10 Cougs. <laughs> Leaf going deep for Carpenter. And Carpenter makes a catch. Was he inbounds? I'll say yes, he got a foot down at the 29. Chad Carpenter, his first catch of the day. 104th of his career. That kid's very athletic, and you could tell on that play, Cleet, that it's a great catch by him. Well, they needed somebody to make a play here to get some interest in this football game. And this time, Ryan has the time and the room to step up. You can see that Chad has bought himself a little bit of real estate there. Runs his pattern up near the sidelines and bends it out. Nice throw and catch that time. Good job of staying on the numbers that time by Carpenter. Cougars go to the two tight end alignment now. First down at the Husky 29. Delayed handoff to Black. He's got Sanderson leading the way. Black, hogtied, brought down by Lester Towns. Town's a big rangy guy, 6'3", 240, and Sonny, if he grows anymore, we'll see him on the defensive line or an adjacent Chorak type position, I'd imagine. No, he's, uh, I think that Lester Towns is a made for middle linebacker. Okay. Showed pretty good speed <laughs> uh, running down Michael Black from inside out there and need to give up that speed down in a down position. Gain of five for Black, it'll be second and five from the 24. And the Cougars have yet another first down on the game by Black. Interesting bit there, uh, Ryan Leaf comes up and, and goes on the first, first count and stops the Huskies from jumping around on that defensive line, actually caught them just making an adjustment. So uh, Ryan doing a little thinking out there. Crowd comes to life a little bit as the Cougars show a little sign of life on the offensive side of the ball. First and 10 from the 16 now. Corners. Two tight ends. Corners for the Huskies just challenging. Black has a little running room. Gets down to the 10 yard line. They'll spot it at the nine. You certainly can see where Michael Black is number two in the league in rushing. There's a lot of fight left in this young man today, Cleet. He's not giving up at all. He's running very hard. Delay. Icaliaga overruns it just a bit. And, uh, Mike Joseph moved those feet, trying to get in that end zone. Again, he's been a performer Come out, here. Washington. Number one. We just said timeout Washington, but pointed in the Cougar direction. I'm assuming it is a Husky timeout, however, as they bring the defense over to huddle. We'll take a break, 5.13 to go, third quarter. All Huskies so far, but the Cougars with a chance to change that. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. 
Huskies leading the Cougars in this 89th Apple Cup, but Washington State with a second down and three from the nine. There's a good look. The Cougars with just 24 yards until this drive. They've picked up 47 yards. A lot of it by Michael Black. One big pass from Ryan Leaf to Chad Carpenter. Cougars might have jumped, and now that do <laughs> blow the whistle now. <laughs> it's a little ping pong ball coming out of that. Rock Heward uh, staying loose. He's not one to accept this. Is already one for the books. Washington State uh, just been inconsistent all Before night. The snap, false start, offense. Five yards from the previous spot, and it's still second down. Looked like the other tight end in the game, Jefferson. Just jumped a little bit. Mike Price back with the headset on now. Maybe going to get a little more involved in the play calling. Uh, interesting that he wasn't wearing that headset in the first half. Trying to change things up a little bit, maybe. So second and eight from the 14. As the Huskies bounce around, Leaf pump fake into the corner for Carpenter, and he can't make the catch. Well, I don't like that. A fan just threw a can out towards the official in the far corner. Not real happy with the call. Here's the post corner trying to sell the quick post. And uh, Smith looks like there's a little bit of contact, but no, that's, that's pretty good defense right there. Ball wasn't thrown very well for Chad and, and his angle and where Ryan thought he was going to were two different. Had to turn three times that time. And, just not able to get there. So third down, call it eight. Worst day of Ryan Leaf's young Cougar career after a lot of hope for his performance against the Huskies last year. The Carpenter, and it's going to be a little shy of the first down, I think. Let's see where the spot is. Chad's a little upset with himself because he was thinking touchdown. He didn't get in there for the, the first down. They're going to probably measure this one right down near the uh, six and a half yard line is where they're gonna spot this. So it's gonna be real close. Huskies coming on the blitz. That time that's probably one of the finest passes Ryan Leaf has thrown this afternoon, right on the money to Chad Carpenter. There's Fiala right in his face. He knows that that little window is open. You can see that uh, Chad starts to send or starts to slip sideways. This will be a half a yard short there. So obviously Washington State's gonna go for this. Field goal doesn't do him a whole lot. Well, I don't know. It's only uh, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Do you want to do something positive for the offense of the Cougars? No, you got to go for it. Cougars need about a half a yard on fourth down. Got to believe they're going to go to the left side of the football. McIndoo, Sanderson, Knuff, the three seniors. They give it to Gilmore with Black leading, and it's a first down, Washington State. The true freshman, Dewan Gilmore, gets the first down. Number 37, Dewan Gilmore. Going, and the one thing, they went towards Scott Sanderson's side. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty good call. Yeah, no, it, it, finally the Cougs are able to execute like uh, when they need to. Third down and eight, they pick it up. Big Scott, key block there, just enough. Had a fine career here, hasn't he, Cleve? He's a great one. He's got a few more downs left him in uh, the next league. To Black on first down, and he'll fight and try to get back to the line of scrimmage. And it looks like he'll lose about a half yard on the spot. David Ritchie down the bottom of that pile. He's uh, happy to be here for the second half because last year he got his bell rung pretty good. Wasn't able to play in this football game in the Apple Cup last year, at least not in the second half. Didn't know where he was. Ryan Leaf ran for a couple of touchdowns against the Huskies last year. Huskies showing blitz right up the middle. Two inside linebackers, Aliaga and Fiala, right in Ryan's face. Leaf the drop, throws it to the corner. It is caught. They'll say incomplete. Caught out of bounds by Chris Jackson. Good coverage that time. Jermaine Smith out there with Jackson, 81. Just about a half a foot too far. Well, the, the Huskies able to convince Ryan to check out and go into that quick out and just 
the timing has not been there all day long. What was that, Ryan Leaf signaling back to the sidelines of the play he was? Well, uh, th th yeah, that, that might be, I'd uh, like to do play action and run Weigel and maybe get outside of this pocket. Third down and goal from the six. The fake, Leaf looking for his man, going to run away from a little bit of pressure, guns in, and it is incomplete. Throw it into traffic. Fourth down, and they will be Tony the Toe on here. A little surprised they don't take another shot at six, but Mike Price wants to get something on the board here. A lot of time, Ryan Leaf uh, with the big fake. Huskies just out there playing, looking for a pass. Nice job by Rainville just to keep on going here as, as Chorak doesn't quit, trying to find uh, Chad Carpenter in the back of the end zone, and uh, that was what we call a force. Just no chance. 23-yard attempt by Tony, the, tr the toe truant. And Eline drives it through, and the Cougars avoid the shutout anyway as they get the field goal. It's 24-3 in favor of the Huskies. Three and a half minutes to play. Third quarter, you're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Twenty-four to three, the Huskies with the lead over the Cougars, with three and a half minutes to play in the Apple Cup. The Husky faithful in the end zone are sticking around for this one. They want to stay till the end of this. Won't be a bitter end for the Huskies the way things are going right now. A lot of time. Tony Truant to kick it off. He will kick into the wind. Jarzinski, Jarzinka rather, at the 25, got a big block, and he's still on his feet out near the 40-yard line. A little dig by the Cougars to come out and do their own pooch kick, huh? We'll show you. Good return by Joe, getting some good yardage out of that, much like the Cougars did earlier in the game. Joe suffered through the heat of summer camp with that long hair and everybody's probably giving him a bad time of it back in <laughs> August, but now they're all thinking, you know that Joe, he's, 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 pretty, he's, smart he's guy. a pretty smart guy. <laughs> Some of the Cougar faithful still smiling. Dylan gets a couple on first down. David Evans in there underneath the pile, along with Brandon Moore. David Evans in there now for uh, big number 91, Leon Bender, who's on the sidelines, sore ankle. The gendarmes escorting a cougar and a husky out who decided to settle their difference of opinion with <laughs> a little Holyfield Tyson action <laughs> in the stands. Ah, yes. So it was a draw. Second and eight for the dogs. They'll give it to Mr. Dillon again. He bounces off one tackle and he'll pick up maybe a yard on that play as well. It'll be third and long for the Huskies. The Huskies need to make sure they don't get too content here and uh, assume that they can just run out the clock by banging away three and out. Although they haven't executed today, this Cougar offense can score and has the, the weapons. I think in the Pac-10, you can't afford to write anybody off. You see well, eight for 12 today. This will be a little bit of a tougher one. It'll be third and a long six. Dylan will go out of the backfield. Heward will drop back and throw. Good protection. Now here comes the pressure. Gets it to Jeremy Brigham and they'll lose yardage. Jeremy Brigham's only catch last year was against Washington State. He gets one this year, but for a loss. One of the, those are the kind of plays that you can use maybe once during a ball game, but we, the Huskies have tried it three times now. Once it was incomplete, and that play well read by the Cougars. Loss of four. It'll be fourth and ten. Now they move it back a little further, so loss of six. It'll be fourth and twelve. Sarshar's gotten him off in time. I'm going to see if the Cougs try to come after this one and get a block. Good kick. Timms fumbles the football. A race for it. Can Timms cover it? 
He does. Didn't get control of it, but he knocked it out of bounds. Sean Timms has been pretty sure-handed as a punt returner. That's the first time he's had a problem. First time the punt is actually coming down in the spiral. It's kind of a weird-looking punt. You might be able to see it. Came down the long way and just misjudged it. And there's the scholarship on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly you run after fumbled punts. Well, you it. asked about Corey. Now, will Tim's be back next year? Yeah. <laughs> Under a full moon. Still waiting for that snow we were promised. Hasn't shown up. Coogs with the ball. 15-yard line. Chorak and Richie jumping around on the defensive line for the dogs. Delay hand off to Black, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. The Huskies doing a nice job to smother Michael Black in the backfield. Again, Jason Chorak getting penetration across the offensive line, disrupting the play from the beginning. Adding to his tackles for loss totals. Had that one read from the get-go. Loss of four for Black on that one. It's second and 14 from the 12. Black, 18 carries for 50 yards. 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Husky showing blitz, then calling it off. Burton waves it off. Leaf has time, good protection. Wants to throw it deep, trying for Jackson, and it is incomplete. Mel Miller came over the top. The Cougar fans wanted interference, but the officials say no. And Mel Miller says no. <laughs> Well, it was a good play. It was very close, obviously, from that angle that we have. Ryan Leaf decides he's just going to throw a punt up there, and uh, whoever is the best athlete is going to come get this. Looks like Chris is open for a while, and now he's waiting, waiting, waiting for that ball. And Miller, uh, a little bit of contact, but uh, that's a pretty, pretty tough call to flag him on that one. Jason Chorak was complaining that he was being held. He was showing the official his shoulder pad that was outside of his uniform. And he said, I didn't do that. 11 seconds left in the third quarter, third and 14 for the Cougars. Leaf guns it and it's incomplete. Kevin McKenzie trying to make a one-handed catch on a ball that was thrown in front of him. Chris Campbell with some pressure. Not much of an offensive series and Ryan Leaf is gonna jog back off the field after three and out in that kind of day. Huskies should get pretty good field position out of this. Uh, Jeff Banks, don't think he's going to fake this one. Mm, I don't think so. He'll catch the snap a couple yards deep in his own end zone. Kind of gets it off the side of his foot. And Jarzinka comes up, makes the running catch and breaks a tackle or two, and the Huskies will have great field position at about the 36-yard line of Washington State. That's the end of the third quarter. The Huskies leading the Cougars 24-3. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Corey Dillon still in the backfield. Ready to continue his long afternoon. 35 carries for 144 yards already. Dylan will pick up a couple on that carry. See who got the tackle in there. They actually ran Corey down from behind. Mike Price trying to get some effort. Some Man, more effort. Look uh, at that time of possession, Cleet. Absolutely dominated by Lambeau's side of the ball. Second and eight for the Huskies. Coleman and Paith on the wide receivers. Dylan, the delayed handoff and the dive play <laughs> gives new meaning to that. Well, he's, he's getting tired of the defenders grabbing at his ankles. He's going to dive for three yards. He's going to have a horizontal <laughs> plane of about three feet off the ground. And he took a pretty good shot there. Maybe he's happy with the taking it to the sidelines, holding his right arm. I got a little stinger there as he is Henderson. Collided about, uh, like I said, uh, six, seven yards downfield. Another nice pickup, though, by Corey. Third and two from the 28. Steve Gleason in at a linebacker. He's another light linebacker. Huskies just lining up two tight ends and banging away. Terry Holloman in the backfield now for the Dogs. 
And he has the first down, and James Darling finally able to bring him down from behind. But it'll be a first down for the dogs at about the 15. And there's, it looks like a little bit of a cramp for Corey Dillon. Well, it's an example right there. Corey Dillon, the big bruising tailback. You get a guy like Terry Holloman in there, much like the Steve Broussard that the Cougars had a few years ago, hitting the hole a little bit quicker than Corey has in the second half. Throwing a changeup to James Darling. He's all braced with his neck all bulled up, ready to, <laughs> ready to take and on Corey. And here comes a flyback going right by him. Three wide receivers in this set for the Huskies. Holloman in the backfield. He spins away from a tackler, loses his balance at about the 12 yard line. Huskies just continuing to chew up time. Holloman's brother, a cougar. Love to get a chance to go in and probably knock heads. Brock Ewart, just quiet, confident, leading the team down the field all day long. It's always kind of fun just to turn around, hand the ball off, and watch all these big guys go at it. Especially when you're in top 24 to three. Cougs jumping off, no flag thrown. Holloman to about the 10, maybe the nine yard line, and the big guy's still banging away. And Holloman says, let me get out of the way. <laughs> Those little legs are pile drivers. The guy's uh, got very strong thighs. Olin Krutz has had a good day. 77 to center for the Huskies. Been out blocking uh, some of the rollout action of Brock Hewer today and having to put up with those big fellas up front of the Cougars all day also. Holloman credited with Getting down to the eight yard line, sets up a third and three from the eight now. 11 and a half minutes left in the football game. Huskies lead it 24 to three. A little too much time, I believe. Well, Playcock's already been reset to 25, so I don't know if it's a delay or if one of the Huskies moved too quickly. App. False start. Offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. So third and eight now from about the 13 yard line. Brock Hewitt, a little different leadership style than Ryan Leaf. He's one that is uh, one to just take everything in stride and, and have a demeanor of, uh, I don't get rattled, I don't get excited. Ryan Leaf, on the other hand, a little more emotional, up and down. Been a little bit down today. Cougars show blitz. Here they come. Heward actually has a man blocked into him. We got a flag thrown. First sack for the Cougars. I believe it's going to be a hold. You see it on the left-hand side. Finally, don't buy on the fake, and uh, Jarzinka gonna throw a crushing block. <laughs> <laughs> Take <made> that! <laughs> Take that and that! He was trying. Shane Doyle just uh, shrugs him off and goes and gets Damon Hewitt for big loss. So that'll take him back to about the... Illegal block in the back. Offense, that penalty's refused. Fourth down. So they'll spot the ball where Heward was tackled. That'll bring on field goal. Wales will attempt one. That's what those little penalties will do for you, Cleet. Little motion penalty are the jumping off sides that the Cougars were doing earlier in the game and totally changes your game, your play calling. That's okay with John Wales, though. He gets a chance to kick another field goal. Maybe block another one, run it back the other way. This will be a 37-yard attempt out of the hold of Shane Fortney. I got a little confusion by the officials. They say the Cougars are going to take time out. So the Cougars are going to ice John Wales? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I don't get <laughs> the wrong personnel in. 11.05 to go in the game. 21-point Husky lead. They're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest.
Casper, Sonny Six Killer, and Lance Jacob here in Martin Stadium. The Huskies with a 21 point lead. Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on Fox Sports Northwest. It's Sonics primetime. And on this week's show, join the glove, Gary Payton, during his dream team summer. We'll hear from the new Sonics, Craig Elo and Jim McElvain. Elo, the former Cougar, and a review of the Sonics East Coast trip. And boy, they've been red hot. Doesn't get much better than that. The ex Husky Detlef Shrimp having a big start for the new season. <laughs> well, I thought it was the big. I just thought I'd add that, Craig bud. Elo. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, and this other guy, let's see, Sean somebody. <laughs> hey, I just read what they wrote. <laughs> They're off to a great start, though. Those guys rode over to this game with you, didn't they, Sonny? It's disco in Pullman. <laughs> the, well, that was kind of the hairstyle when you were playing. Absolutely, the big chops and everything else, <laughs> you know. Huskies will try the field goal, 37-yard attempt, just inside the left hash. Good snap. Pushed it a little to the right. So the Cougars will take over at the 20. With 11 minutes left in the football game. That's the right calf for Dillon. If anybody deserves to have a tired, sore yeah, leg, it's, say, it's this guy. He's I don't blame him for cramping up on a cold day like this with all the carries he's had this afternoon. Ryan Leaf back on for the Cougars. Gonna go with two tight ends here. <laughs> uh, doesn't make too much sense, but they're gonna try and get it done. Michael Black, maybe. Play fake to Black. Leaf gonna try to throw it deep and just had the ball come out of his hand. Leaf, I think, has covered it. That was a that was a Dave Craig job. I was gonna say soap dish. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ryan just not able to let this one fly. Play action. He's got Sean McWashington way downfield, but this whoops, uh, forgot the last part of that throw, and he's lucky to jump right back onto it. It's been that kind of day for Ryan. Just nothing has has come open when he's thrown the ball well, and uh, then things like this pop up. Well, that's something you and I were talking about during the timeout, though, Cleet. He kind of slingshots it out, lays it out, instead of really pumping that ball. Work for the summer. Here comes the pressure. Leaf runs away from it, has a man wide open, and he threw it too, hall, too tall for Sean Timms. Well, you can't blame that one on Ryan. That looked like uh, Sean had kind of turned around without con continuing to run his route. Ryan's got a guy in his face with a big purple helmet on and you just got to try to get rid of that thing and again just hasn't clicked this afternoon. Lester Towns will come off in Kaliaga back in for the dogs at linebacker. Third and 20 from the 10 for the Cougars. Something tells me Lester may have been uh, should have been out in coverage <laughs> on that play. He's looked a little confused. Leaf going deep, has a man open. It's Tim's again. This time they hook up. First down, Cougars into Husky territory at the 43. Run the wheel route. Sims out of his slot position in the four wide receiver set. Going to go out like he's running the, the flat route. Ryan pumps it. Huskies bite young corners. And this time the ball's thrown perfectly. Look again like they had the mismatch with Fiala covering Tim's. Rob Rainville, 79 for the Cougars, doing a good job on Jason Chorak, not letting him get to Ryan Leaf. First down, Cougars at the 43 of the Huskies. Michael Black, a hard-earned couple of yards there. Ink Aliaga on the tackle. Honolulu meets Los Angeles. Good job by Michael Black. John Fiala was in position to stop him for no gain. And he was able to get away and gain a few yards. Black now, 19 carries, 53 yards on the day. Cougars out of this set like to go play action. Just a straight drop. Leaf being pressured, throws it up. It is McKenzie, makes the catch, and he'll go down at about the three-yard line. 
He beat Nigel Burton, and the Cougars will have it first and goal. And Jerry Jensen is down, injured at the midfield stripe. Well, Ryan Leaf, just as we think all the wheels have come off, it puts the car back together and puts together two nice throws. This time does an excellent job of just buying some time as he slides to his left. You see him just, just buying two or three seconds, and that allows the post corner to develop. McKenzie, recipient of a well-thrown ball that time. Well, it's one thing, too, the Huskies knowing that they have to throw the ball to really get back in the ball game, and they're still blitzing people. Maybe it's a time to hang back and uh, play the soft zone and make him beat you throwing accurate passes. That was a very nice throw and good catch. Leaf now 7 of 23 for 118 yards. Cougars first and goal from the two. Gilmore and Black in the backfield for Washington State. Play. Leaf naked bootleg, touchdown Washington State. Well, there's a little wrinkle that, <laughs> that the Huskies probably weren't expecting, and the Cougars just dying to use it all game, but never in a position down close earlier in the football game. But this is flawless right here. Ryan Leaf sells it, and you can tell the Husky, I think it was Aliaga there on the end of the line of scrimmage, uh, lost containment. And uh, Ryan will just go hand it to the side judge and say, let's go kick the extra point. Those are the kind that you and I could run in. Used to be. I'd probably pull up my <laughs> Truitt adds the extra point. And it's 24 to 10 Huskies. The Cougars with a little life with 8.50 to go in the game. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. The Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest is brought to you by Pepsi-Cola. Nothing else is a Pepsi. And by the new Dodge. See your Northwest Dodge dealer today. And by Sterling Savings, all the bank you'll ever need. And by Miller, genuine draft, stay cool. Tony Truant will kick it off for Washington State. The Cougars with an 80-yard drive, and they actually ended up going 90 yards after the first play when Ryan Leaf did the uh, Statue of Liberty, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's true but redeemed himself with a couple of big passes to Sean Timms and Kevin McKenzie. And then the two yard touchdown run for Leaf, who had a couple of rushing touchdowns against the Huskies in Seattle. The official did a nice job. Notice his form on accepting <laughs> that handoff. Not his first, first handoff. Well, Ryan Leaf back in uh, the Cougar sidelines, hoping his defense can maybe get a turnover for him here. See if Turner will kick it deep, he will with the wind and sends it into the end zone. So the Huskies will start at the 20. Be interesting to see if Corey Dillon comes back or if he's done for the day. It's like Terry Holloman's going to be going in. Well, if possible, Coach Doba. His defensive group that actually, you know, in all fairness, have played very well. The, the two touchdowns here, the second half, were set up by turnovers uh, that, that they performed admirably, even though 24 points is uh, showing up against them. Huskies came in averaging 34 points a game. Leon Bender back in the game there. Uh, right ankle must have got taped up. Holloman. Will pick up about five, just keeps driving and ends up making it about a seven yard game. Nice job by the junior out of Cascade High School in Everett. Leon Bender uh, with the score getting a little closer, gets a little healthier. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm okay, I'm okay. Feels much better, coach. You know, what's really evident to me here as we watch the, the new tailback Holloman is that maybe it doesn't matter who is at that tailback position that you might have had a uh, Pac-10 leading rusher whether it's Sheehy, Holloman, Dillon, they're big guys up front are doing the job. Huskies 206 yards rushing. They came in averaging 220 a game. James Darling says not this time to Mr. Holloman. No game. Number six, Terry Holloman. James Darling's won his fair share of the skirmishes here. He's had an outstanding football game. Talk about guys that have been there forever. You see the Cougars jumping offside, but still able to play off the double team. 
have an impact on that play. We talked about that earlier, the big guys in front having to occupy one or two guys so James Darling can run around and, and make those kind of tackles. Here's a big play right here, third and three. See if the Huskies have enough confidence in that running game to put it on the ground again. They will, and they will not pick up the first down. The Cougar defensive line stiffens when it has to, and the Huskies will have to punt it away. Let's go down to the sidelines to Lance Jacob. Hey, bud, you guys may have hit on something. Leon Bender, it looked like his day was done. Ryan Lee scored a touchdown, the game tightened up. He jumped off the bench and said, let's go get him back upstairs. <laughs> There's big Leon giving a hug to Shane Doyle in there. They just absolutely stuffed the entire offensive line into about a three yard area no place for Holloman to go and that's a good job by the defense there Cougars should have pretty good field position if Sean Timms is able to handle this punt from Sarshar high snap Sarshar gets it away it's a short kick Timms will come up and tells everybody to get out of the way the Huskies end up getting a decent bounce out of it good job by Sarshar to come down with the grab Almost got lobbed over his head. 6.26 to go in the game. Huskies by 14. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Huskies lead it by 14, but the Cougars, who scored a touchdown with their last possession, will have it again here. Sarshar does a nice job to catch the floating snap and gets a pretty good bounce on the kick. Watch this one. He has to go up the ladder. Does a pretty good job. When that first snap came out of there, I thought, oh, that might go over his head, but it was a soft lob back to him. Four wide receivers, black in the backfield, no tight end. Leaf audibles on first and 10 from the Cougar 36. Protection is good, and McWashington the catch for a first down. That pass was caught by Sean McWashington, number 45, from Ryan Leaf. Cougars buying Ryan a little bit of time able to again drift off to the left away from the defender. I think that was Wicks getting some pressure right up the middle and he's able to throw a pretty accurate throw there. Had to slice it in between linebacker and corner and got it done. All of a sudden a couple of numbers uh, they're not exactly what Ryan was expecting out of this game. Nowhere near to his uh, efficiency of last year's game but starting to move a little. 6.20 left in the football game. Huskies calling off the blitz. Leaf pressured anyway. Almost got away from David Ritchie, but he goes down. And the Cougars will have to hustle now because that'll keep the clock moving. Shows you how big Ryan Leaf is. David Ritchie is no small man. Being able to grab him and throw him down, but still Ryan Leaf almost came out of this thing, Cleve. Well, David Ritchie goes with the swim technique right over the top. Ryan sees him. He tries to do a swim of his own. <laughs> the ball's flying around there, and he almost got away with him, but Richie's credited with the sack. Second down now, about 15 yards, five yards loss on that play. Look at the pressure this time. Leaf tries to get rid of the ball to Black, but the whistle was blown. I think they're going to call him for in the grasp. Ryan Leaf is uh, trying to appeal to the official for... Uh, Offsides, but it looked like there that the, the Huskies knew the count and the Cougs didn't. Just absolutely missed him all the way, and there's a the mistake. Ryan's begging for some help, but that's just a, a big error. Ryan Chu just leaves him almost like they were run blocking. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a good thing the officials called him dead. Otherwise, it would have been grounding the ball and a loss of down. Well, two plays now. It's uh, third and a whole bunch. Two sacks in a row. That's three on the day for the Dogs now. Third and 22 for the Cougars from the 34. Leaf steps up, throws it deep. T Taylor makes the catch, and it's a first down for the Cougars. Well, you can keep on knocking him down, but he's showing he'll get back up. Ryan Leaf throwing an excellent pass again. The, uh, the post corner type of uh, route run by Taylor looked like Nigel Burton had that read perfectly and was going to break on it, lost his footing and just gave it that extra little five tenths of an inch to get through there because he was in really pretty good position to knock that away. Nice catch this time by Taylor. The wide receiver starting to come through now. 4.50 to go in the game. The Cougars in a situation now where they almost need to call two plays in the huddle. Five wide receivers, nobody in the backfield. Leaf wants the quarterback draw it. 
And we got a flag thrown. That'll stop the clock. Going to be a hold on the Cougs. Looks like the fellow we talked about earlier, Scott Sanderson, holding Ink Aliaga. Strange call. Eats up a lot of time. Well, he actually had it. Uh, you know, as, as Aliaga is coming on the blitz, he's the middle linebacker. Fiala and him are both coming, and it just was stuffed up in the middle that Ryan couldn't get through cleanly. Campbell was there. He's not going to sneak through any hole. No, he, <laughs> he, he's not someone that tiptoes around. Holding. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. So first and 22 now from the 47. There's Wiggs in the middle, and Aliaga is just kind of roped and tied and set down there. That's a, uh, a rodeo in Pullman. Yes. Well, Mike Price's team needs another big play here. They need to score quickly. Four and a half minutes to go in this game. They trail by two touchdowns. Leaf, pump fake, throws as Carpenter, and that'll pick up about 14. And for Chad Carpenter, that's his 106th catch as a Cougar. Ties him with Ed Barker for the number 10 spot on the all-time receiving charts in Pullman. Well, usually you don't want to pump to the guy in the middle and then try and throw it after you've invited linebackers and a couple other monsters in there. But Chad's able to hold on to that football under less than ideal conditions. Cougars with the wind behind them. Out of the shotgun. Second and seven. Leaf steps up and has his man Tim's little running room. Cuts it outside. Foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. Touchdown. Ryan Leaf. Deshaun Tim. 33 yards. Well, just when we were about to write this one off. You never can tell with a passing team. That's right. You got weapons like Sean Timms who once he does get the football, has excellent speed and open field running capabilities. He's the punt returner. Watch this move right here. It just sets him down. Is Smith, who's the corner. Burton unable to come all the way across, so Cougars come through in a long yardage situation. Tony the Toe puts it through. 24-17. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Cougars have certainly brought the crowd back into this football game by scoring two fourth quarter touchdowns. They trail by seven with 3.46 to go in the game. Got to cry credit Ryan Leaf for bouncing back after he's absolutely struggling all day, dropping the ball. Uh, the persistence and just absolute courage that he's showing here in this fourth quarter is, is telling me something. Tony the Troll would be interesting to see if he goes ahead and just drills this. The hands team is on for the Huskies expecting the onside kick. The pooch would work pretty good here, but it blows off the tee. The way the Huskies have their hands team set up, they've got nine guys up, and then they've got Mike Reed and Fred Coleman deep, but there's a big gap in between, and the way Truant is able to pooch that ball over that front line. It could get real interesting. Huskies just made an adjustment to what you were pointing out, bud. Right. Moving Fred Coleman up to the 35-yard line. He doesn't know where to line up, uh, but again, I think the, the Cougars be best served just drilling this through the end zone. And that's exactly what Truant will do. And Mike Reed will let it bounce in the end zone, so it automatically will come out to the 20. What's nice about that, no time comes off the clock. That's correct. They start at the 20, and that's a pretty good spot. You rely on your defense now that uh, has a little bit of uh, fire stoked underneath them to shut down Corey Dillon, who has to come off the bench a little bit cold and, and get back in there. Well, the offensive line for the Huskies certainly need to rally themselves as well. I'm sure the Cougars will come back to that aggressive blitzing style they had early on, Cleet, that dis disrupted the running attack. Absolutely. They're just going to say tackle to tackle. Uh, Leon Bender's back off the bench. All of a sudden, new life. <laughs> he could run a marathon on that ankle. This first down play will be the key right here. Dillon. Not much doing there. Maybe a yard by the time it's all said and done. Also got to play with poise now, too. You can't get, get too mixed up in the extracurricular activities, but uh, that's the key play as you see that Sore right calf, Corey Dillon. He 
He's not able to get any room to run inside. Cougars again. And Corey Dillon is going to have to come off. He's not able to perform at 100%. Holloman will come back into the ball game, or perhaps it's Harris. It's Mike Reed oh, in there. Mike Gilbert. Reed, the big back. Very solid runner. Second and eight, they gave Dillon two yards on the play. Cougs Huskies are not going to get the snap off, so delay time. a game. The clock has expired for two seconds, and now they finally blow the whistle. It's going to be a delay, a game penalty against the Dogs. Took the officials a long time to recognize that. Well, the crowd, uh, the sparse crowd left really on the Cougar side, very loud, the officials' whistle not being heard. DeMore and Cola saying, uh, no, no, not going to get anything on this side of the field here as he's able to defend that last lob play, but things are interrupted. The clock stops. Before the snap, delay game on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot, still second down. Five-yard penalty makes it second and 13 for the 17, and I would imagine, Cleet, if the Cougars stop the Huskies on this play, timeout Washington State. Yeah, that's where you, uh, you've got your timeouts to burn. Uh, it's always been my thought process that you uh, stop the clock while you're on defense, let offense, once they get control of the football, use their ability to down it, but that's a long way away right now. They got to think stopping the Huskies on this play right here. Sonny, who's the go-to receiver in this situation? You got to look for a guy, uh, Jarzinka, who's in there right now, number 21. Heward throws it up the sidelines. Boren Cola, the coverage on Coleman, it's incomplete. Good pass, good coverage. Coleman couldn't hang on. Beautiful defense that time by Moore and Cola. Exact same play they ran last time, the lob up the sideline. And he's able to jam his hand in between uh, Pathon's, uh, R. Coleman's arms and knock that thing away. So that stops the clock. Exactly. And, Don't have to use the timeout. That, that, you know, that's the disadvantage. You can see that hand going right between Coleman's hands. Brock Hewitt, pretty good throw, but again, stops the clock third and 11. Uh, tough play call here for the Huskies. See if well, the one guy that the Huskies are missing is Dave Janoski, who has been out for most of the ball game. Third and 13. Hewitt, play fake, wants to throw, throws it deep, and it is caught and dropped. Very strange. Perhaps the Huskies are thinking the offensive coaches what you guys were about burning the timeouts. Well, the, you know, that's that's a, maybe a play that's considered as good as a punt, that if it's intercepted or what have you, but Brock Hewitt delivered that ball right where it was. Regardless, that stops the clock. Hardly any time taken off in that whole series, and the Kooks should get the ball in pretty good field position. They look like they're going to come after Hamid Sarshar here. Now they don't. They set up the return. It's a short kick. Should Tim's fair catch. He'll cover the ball at the 41-yard line. Hold on to your seat. Nice 23-yard punt. <laughs> well, you you know, you just can't expect much more. There is a pretty good breeze going here, and uh, whether it's 33, 43, the Kooks still would have the ball in pretty good field Very position. Very good field position. And Ryan Leaf uh, seemingly have uh, come back from the dead, bring this football team back. 231 left to go on the Husky 40-yard line. Ryan Leaf is hit on six consecutive passes. Nobody in the backfield. Five wide receivers for the Cougars. Here's the pressure. Gets it off. Carpenter the catch. He's got some running room. Carpenter a block from McWashington. He'll go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Cougars have found something that works, and that is to run the delay route underneath the slot as he clears out the man-to-man -man coverage. Here you see Parrish's with Tims and doesn't allow Miller to cover very closely on Chad Carpenter, and he's scooting up that same sidelines that Sean Tims just did. And he stopped the clock, which was a great move by Chad. Carpenter, four catches into the top 10 Cougar career lists. First down at the 22 for the Cougars. Leaf, the short drop. Guns it out. Another catch. First down at the 13. No, it won't be. It'll be a nine-yard game. McWashington the catch. Boy, how many times do you see it when an offense is ahead 24-zip and you kind of go a little stale and 
it's hard to get jump started again when you're when you're the other team's getting close. Whereas when you're on a roll like the Cougars are, it just stays hot. Absolutely. These two Washington teams and UCLA were the only Pac-10 teams not to play in overtime this year. UCLA beat USC in overtime today. We could be looking at some extra play here. All of a sudden, the Cougars moving the football. 2.18 to go, plenty of time. Cougars have two timeouts, as do the Huskies. Got to hurry. Leaf almost lost the ball on the snap. And that gain or play will go for no gain. And it'll keep the clock rolling, which really right now is, is not as big a factor as I had thought it might be when the Cougs got the ball back. Ryan Leaf has his offensive team on the line of scrimmage for a long time there, making a couple adjustments, and the snap just came up. Uh, it might have jammed a finger there. As, uh, sometimes, Sonny, you remember how many times you catch that ball in the, right in the, the big finger? Two down territory for the Cougars on third and two. Let's see if Michael Black gets it. He does. Black bounces it, has the first down. He'll be near the 10 yard line. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains. Ryan Leaf needs to communicate with the sidelines now and uh, understand that he's got time to work with. He's got four new plays. Complete their plays at the start of a game, start of the half that are scripted. Are there red zone plays in a situation yeah. like this, or does the game situation change that? No, definitely there is a, a, a script or a, a, I guess, a menu of plays that you can look to uh, inside the 20-yard line. Black tries to cut it back. Black! Touchdown, Washington State. The... You got a late hit. Jason Chorak on Brian Leaf that will be assessed on the kickoff. Personal foul on the Huskies. That'll probably be assessed on the kickoff, and uh, that might create some interesting opportunities. But and Ryan Leaf is banged up. Either that, or he's just fainting with happiness. But I don't think he'll do that because he's got a hold on the kick. How do you like this one? Woo! He doesn't look good to me. It looks like he's really wandering around almost drunkenly on the football field you don't want that to happen to your holder and he is not feeling very good at all as as he's going to take a knee and and just uh hopefully regain his confidence regain his senses is more the confidence has been regained yes i think so he's had a tremendous fourth quarter and he's really come on he's run for a score he's been accurate he's been more accurate than he had in the previous three quarters cleat coaches are calling plays to make him successful that's a 15-yard penalty, and it'll be assessed on the kickoff. So Mike Price is, uh, you know, kind of nodding to his coaching staff, saying, okay, ho hum, this is just kind of an average idea of what we had uh, set up here. Tony the Tro, the senior, will have to come on to tie this ball game. Huskies running in different personnel trying to block this. Biggest kick of this young man's Cougar career. We are tied with a minute 18 to go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great Huskies. comeback. Very unbelievable, but passing attack, when it's hot, it's hot. Huskies scored the first 24 points in this game. The Cougars were left for dead. They were roadkill, and they've come back to tie it at 24. Well, let's see what happens on the kickoff here coming up. Good nice. move by yeah. Michael Black. Great cutback. He almost did it the play before. Able to stiff arm Inkaliaga in the hole and then accelerate past uh, Parrish to the end zone. Just an incredible job by the offensive line as they've been able to protect Leaf and give a little hole for Michael Black to exploit. 15-yard penalty. Do you go with the onside kick now? That's what I was thinking. Uh, I, I guess it doesn't really hurt you because... Uh, 118. I, my, my experience goes back to last year's decision as you see the absolute late hit and, and Chorick knew it the whole time. He's pointing to Ryan say he was going to hit me. But uh, last year, Cougars were kind of in a similar situation where they had to kick off late in the game. They did the pooch kick. It didn't go very far and then in fact was returned right. for about 20, 25 yards and set up the last minute uh, field goal by Wales last year. So I would expect that the Cougars will try to play for the tie, feeling that their offense is on a roll, and let's go ahead and go to this 
new tiebreaker. Ryan Leaf, hopefully he's okay, and uh, let's see which offense can get it in the end zone on a tiebreaker type of situation. That'd be my thought process. Mike Price. I think I, I thought I just saw Mike Price tell uh, Tony Truant to kick it into the stands. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, it's that, a long ways to go with a minute 18 yeah. and the way the Huskies have been performing here of late. And with Corey Dillon unable to go. And Dave Janoski, also one of their clutch possession receivers, not in the ballgame. Unbelievable. Goes back to a blocked field goal and a missed field goal by John Wales in the second half. That's been the bugaboo that's hurt the Cougars the last couple of weeks. Special teams have turned things around in a negative way, and today perhaps in a positive way. Look at this guy. He's just getting warmed up, he says. Take off the shirt. <laughs> Let's get it on. Truant kicks it high and into the end zone, kind of tantalizing Reed, and Reed will have to set it down. So no time goes off the clock. A minute 18. Uh, you go ahead, take the shot that maybe you play for the field goal uh, what and, and use the timeouts. What I'm wondering, Sonny, do you set up some plays here that you try to get a feel for what the defense is doing to see what might work in the overtime session. Well, it's a whole different defense you're going to see here that you'll see in the red zone. So it, I don't think that would work so much. The one thing here is the Huskies can't afford to come out and throw three long passes incomplete and leave time on the clock. Cougars still have two timeouts as well. Cougars back uh, backing off more of a prevent kind of look than up and challenging. They've got starting unit in there. Reed lined up in an H-back position. Heward, the short drop, he's going to run it himself. He's got a little running room and slides underneath Derek Henderson. First down will stop the clock. Brock Heward looked fairly quick on that play, Cleet. Yeah, he uh, planted that foot and he was off to the races. 111 left in the game now. We saw Brock Heward, Huskies did, in the first game of the year against ASU come back late. A couple big plays. You were the quick drop, the out, and has the catch, Fred Coleman at the 36. That'll stop the clock. Cooks keeping everything in front of him, knowing that the wind is in the face of Wales and that it's got to be a dramatic play. They got to. They have to be real close. They'd have to do something, make a big error in order to let somebody get behind them. So if Brock wants to throw the five yard out a couple times, then they'll let him do that. You know, the wind is blowing strong enough that the coin flip, if we do go to overtime, could be pivotal. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you laugh now. No, yeah, I do. So. <laughs> it's true. Second and four for the 36 with 58 seconds left in regulation. Delayed handoff to Reed. He'll try to run out of bounds, and he will get close to the first down marker down to 51 seconds left the spot is just shy of the first down marker well, this game is just I'm still just stunned we were writing it off begging for some offense and uh, at least I was Sonny and I <laughs> my prayers have come true here we got a tied up ball game 51 seconds left third and one for the dog Now the first order of business, the Huskies need about a half yard here. Reed will be stood up, but he'll get enough for the first down. So that'll be enough that the Cougars will not see the football in regulation, unless the Huskies have a turnover, which you would not expect. They'll just wrap up the football, Sonny, I'd imagine, with 44 seconds left. Well, they're out near the 40. Let's see what happens. You got a timeout now. I think if, you know, if I'm the Husky side, which I'm not, and never will be, <laughs> but you know, there's a chance maybe to take a shot at throwing something down the middle and, and picking up 20 yards here, and that would dramatically change the complexion of what you're thinking. Go ahead and, and take a shot at throwing something down uh, downfield a little ways here. Rock Heward has shown that he's got the poise, even though he's a young player. I think if you throw it downfield, I'd rather go down towards the sideline and let my Jerome Pathan make an acrobatic catch. He's capable of doing that. 
The Cougars, though, have not allowed any long passes today by the Huskies. <laughs> Glenn Johnson, the PA announcer, just welcomed those of you who left back to the stadium. <laughs> yeah, they're coming back in now. There's the story tied at 24. Each team has pitched a shutout for a stretch. Mike Price never doubted it for a minute. Knew he was in control the whole way. Just set him up, get well, that yeah. Corey Dillon guy off the field, and, uh, and then we'll charge back. Well, the thing is, it's something you always tell your young kids when you're coaching or you're playing young sports, you never give up. It's one thing the Cougars haven't done today. First down, Huskies on their own 41. 44 seconds left. Cougars, Cougars show blitz. Now we have movement. And the Huskies say the Cougars jumped. Cougars are saying that Benji Olsen moved. Leon Bender is extremely <laughs> uh, demonstrative, making sure that the officials know that he was not the culprit this time. Before the snap, full start, offense. Five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Plus, you know, too, Cleet, that there's a lot of talking going on down there. And no. Who knows, Mr. Bender might have the same voice as Brock Heward. But the tight end, Jeremy Brigham, on the top side, a little anxious up there, number 84. Ball moved back to the 36 now. It's first and 15. That's pretty much a moot point. The fact of the matter, the ball's on the 36 with 44 seconds left. Heward has time, throws it up the sidelines for Payton. He makes the catch. Out there of bounds at the 27. Coach Linehan must have been listening to me, Cleet. Yeah, he was because D. Morincola is up in a position where he's challenging Payton. Here he is. He's just locked up like he's been all game. Gives away the outside, just that extra step. And he doesn't turn his head in time to find the ball. That's a perfectly thrown ball. And boy, you. You just wonder why is he in that position? Why is he up challenging like that? Why not sit back and, well, it's all history, but <laughs> it's history now. But 37 seconds left. Saying. Right now it's a 44 yard field goal attempt. Reed balls his way for three yards. Every yard will be precious to John Wales now. And every position on the field also. Uh, this is well within his range, though. Well, John has missed one this afternoon, but last year in Husky Stadium. 30-30 tie, he was able to come through and hit the big one for the winner. There you see, longest of his career, 49 yards. Longest of the season, 42 yards. And Brock Heward wants a timeout. Well, this is a, a dangerous position from the standpoint of play calling. You never know what's going to happen if there's a sack or you know people get spun around and you lose that time. You almost have to go ahead and and kick the ball here because you know there's no timeouts eight, left yeah eight seconds you got to get out you know there's just no guarantee you're going to get another shot with just eight seconds even if you throw the five yard out you never know what's going to happen so well, you, you got to go with it but you can see the flags on the goal posts or there is a stiff wind down there the field goal that john wales hit last year to give the huskies the win was only a 21 yarder so he'll have a little tougher task. Well, he's a senior. He's got to be up to it. You know, kickers are a strange lot anyway, and uh, he's got to bounce back from missing the one earlier. Missed one, had one blocked today. He's a lonely man right now. <laughs> Look at him. He's out there all Where's everybody? Come hey, on. Hey, guys, uh, how about coming on out here and blocking for me? I'm a little lonely, and my foot's cold. Well, the Cougars do have some tall defensive linemen, 6'7", 6'6". Line of scrimmage is the 24. The spot will be at the 31. It'll be a 41-yard attempt from the center of the field into the win. And the officials are going to ice them a little bit. I think the Cougs have just called timeout. Yes, they have. So the Cougars use their second timeout. Well, if I was John Wales, I'd come to the sideline and stick my foot next to the heater. Yep, just warm that puppy up a little bit and uh, 
Washington State, on the other hand, is going to bring an ice bucket out and, and dunk the ball <laughs> in it so that when he does kick it with that warm foot, it'll be like kicking a brick. What are how Chuck Nelson feels down in the Husky <laughs> radio booth right now. He has some memories of this stadium and field goals. Well, he's got to remind that for Chuck. Well, he's got to let him know. Even though he's not here. I know you always like to remind him when he was here, Cleet. So. Eight Mike seconds. Price, Jim Lambright, wondering if they're going to work a little overtime today. Now, you should be nice to Chuck. You might need a golf lesson once in a while, Cleet. I've seen your game. Uh, I need more than, more than a golf lesson. <laughs> yeah. Take three lessons, then quit the game. Well, this is the fun part of college football right here to see it come down in a big rivalry game like this and big comeback by the Cougars in the second half. Now watch the snap. This has been the key component for the Huskies. They've had a lot of trouble getting a decent snap back to Fortney, not only today, but in the last couple of weeks. Henson does the snapping. Snap's good, spot's good, kick is on its way, plenty of distance. He hooked it to the left. Oh, man. Three seconds left. We're probably headed to overtime. Boy, he had the leg. He had the distance. Might be attributed a little bit to the wind blowing down there on the field. Absolutely. It is, it is in your face, and soccer-style kickers are going to hook it a little bit. And so looks like we've got us three seconds left before overtime here you see looks like it starts out there but the, the wind catches that ball and just <laughs> not much not by much not by much pretty good stroke he just, thought he had it he pretty he had good it. kick by john but uh speaking of the golf game once the wind gets a hold of it it's going to push it denied and coach lambo's going to watch this one and he cannot believe it mike price <laughs> disbelief disbelief Oh, we won't get it as Ryan Leaf just downs it. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got overtime. And the Cougs are fired up. First time this year for the Huskies. First time on this side. Okay, bud, get your rules out now. Yep, coin toss coming up. You do have your choice of whether you want the ball right away or whether you want to go with the win. And the win has to become a factor in this. I, I think so that uh, the, the winner of this coin toss, I believe, will elect to go on defense and take the win and see whether or not they have to uh, kick a field goal or score a touchdown. I think that's the, that's a the, good call. the, the biggest uh, thought process and the mentality is, do I have to score six or do I have to score three? So we'll uh, see what happens here, but I think the win will be an important decision. And you can see Coach Lambright, I know, is, knows very well how that win is going to affect the football. Yes, he but does. You have, you have to wonder psychologically if the Cougars maybe have a bit of an advantage now with the way they came back and the fact that a lot of times it comes down to a kick in these games. And John Wales has missed two field goals, had one blocked, and Tony Truant has hit his. There you get the rules. We will have the coin toss momentarily, and then we will play overtime from the 25, the Kansas tiebreaker. So, yep. Sonny, tell me what you do. You win the toss here. What's your, what's your call? Well, I think I agree with what you said, Cleet. I think the win is a big factor. You look at the flags blown around down there, and I'd like to know what the other team is going to do. And also, if you shut them down, yep. you have an opportunity to win it. Great advantage. Well, how many overtimes are we going to go, guys? Well, uh, I, I think uh, one. <laughs> just, just one. <laughs> what, you got a flight to catch? Yeah, I, I think one is plenty. I'm sure the players and coaches also would like to see it. I don't think we'll see a Dick Tomey four overtimes and say, that's gone too far, let's go for two. <laughs> I don't think we'll see that. Well, who'd have thunk it? The other little factor that you might want to think about if you're Mike Price and the Cougar side of things is, is your defense has been out on that football field an awful lot today. And, and maybe, you know, the, the offense has sprung to life. They've come back. Maybe you go ahead and just say, heck with it. We're going we're gonna to light it up. We're going to get put Ryan Leaf now that he's back to his old self. And we're going to put him on the field and, That's right. and let him go after it and, and try to really well, put the pressure on the Huskies to score six because it doesn't look like they have the services of Corey Dillon. No, it, it doesn't appear so. But you've seen that in other sports where teams will rally and rally and rally. But in the end, it could end up the, the way it was in the beginning, you know, with the Huskies on top. It's well, gonna feel fun. funny for the captains to be shaking hands again. Yeah. Hey, we just did this. 
I was just pointing my finger at you. Now I got to shake your hand again. <laughs> Officials explaining. Gordon Reese is uh, letting everybody know the rules and how things are supposed to go. And I think he's probably appreciative of of the good sportsmanship that's gone on so far. A couple tussles, but nothing of significance. And here's the coin toss. And the Cougars, Cougars look have like won the toss. They have won it, and so there now it looks like they're deferring. Well, the Cougars would have to say they either want the ball or field position, and then the Huskies get to yeah. confirm whether they okay. want the ball or the other field position. So that's basically what occurs here. Washington State won the toss and elected to play defense. Washington chooses to defend that goal. We'll take a break. We'll have the overtime. 24-24, Cougs and Huskies in the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Think in motion. Heward will throw on first down. Little screen to Mike Reed. Reed is going to have a first down and be dragged down at the 70. Fumbled the ball, but it was after the play was dead. Down to the nine-yard line. Pretty good job by Mike Reed to get as much yardage as he did off that play. Well, a quick gain of 16. Well set up, well executed that time. The tight end screen had been sniffed out, but this time they leaked the tail back out, pitching the ball. Another guy that's not in the ball game is uh, Cam Cleland, 85, the regular tight end. First and goal now for Brock Hewitt and the Huskies. This is where they might miss Corey Dillon. Let's see what Mike Reed can do. Cougars jump offside. There's a flag. Free play for the Huskies. Reed brought down no game. The Huskies move, but I think it was after the Cougar contact. Leon again is guilty. It's hard, it's mad, it's hard to believe he can do that on a bad ankle. <laughs> well, he's just right, lined up right on top of that football, and, and he's... Must have extra sensitive ears because when those <laughs> quarterbacks side defense half the distance to well, the you got to be all fired up during a still first down overtime play no, that'd be exciting when it clean I think to be down there and oh it'd be an absolute blast it's a great concept I really like it Huskies now inside the five they've got four downs to sneak it across got to like the Washington position right now again. No matter what happens here, the Cougars will have the football for their turn. Cougars blitzing. They give it to Reed, and Reed breaks a couple of tackles and gets close to the goal line. About six inches away, it looks like. Boy, you've got good eyes. Well, you know, it looked like from the beginning there that Mr. Moore, number 22, was going to get back there and get him behind the line of scrimmage. It was a good job by... He does get him. He, he actually is just a little bit late on that time. He just barely got picked off there. You see that uh, James Darling is able to stop Reed just short of the goal line. About a half a yard for the Huskies to get into the end zone here in the overtime. Heward was trying to get into the end zone the way Ryan Leaf does, and it backfires. Nah, that was a broken play for sure. Terrible, terrible circumstance. Brock Cured, it looked like he turned the wrong way. Everybody else is set up to go to the right side, and he opens up to the left, and, and I got to believe that's on Brock Cured. It sure appeared that way. Look, at he's just going to turn around and look for the back, and, and he's not even anyone near him. And it looked like the hole was being created off the right side. Lost of two, back to the three now. Do you got to throw it? We got to remember also that, you know, Brock Hewitt, first overtime game, is just a redshirt freshman quarterback. Strange things happen near the goal line. Yep, Jarzinka in at the slot, might go in motion. Yep, try to get him the ball in the, on the flat. Hewitt into the end zone for Payton, makes the catch. Touchdown Huskies. Beautiful throw and catch from Brock Hewitt to Jerome Payton. D. Moore and Cola had the coverage. Much like that long pass play complete in the fourth period, Jerome Payton able to go up over Marincola and make the grab. Nope, just he has better position because he's looking back at the quarterback and can adjust to the ball. And that's just very good coverage all the way that time by D. Just a better play by Payton. Well, they need a good snap here. John Wales with two missed field goals. Low snap, but he gets it through. 
So the Huskies <laughs> convert. I tell you, the Husky kicking game is just an adventure every time. <laughs> well, I think the big play, the 16 yard first down play, the pass from Brock Heward to Mike Reed, the getting the Huskies play. off early. So uh, here's the touchdown throw. Brock Heward just going to open up to his good side, plant and lob it out there and let his athlete go over the top. You can see that's just. A great catch. Very much so. I mean, Jerome Payton, the, the agility drills that the Huskies go through, he is one of the, he's the top guy in all their agility drills, and to go with his good speed, good concentration to hang on to the football. You know, it's it's uh, maybe 30 degrees out here, and just to have the ability to hold on to that football mindless of having somebody's fist in your face is a great athletic achievement. Four wideouts, black in the backfield for Washington State. They go now from the 25 with a full complement of downs. Huskies look very confused as far as line that Jensen, Aliaga, they're all talking to each other. Leaf going up already for Carpenter. Can't hang on. Well, there was a battle. Ryan Leaf going right up for it all. The whole enchilada the first Ooh, play. I think he audible to that, didn't he? I, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the Huskies were bouncing around so much, but this ball is is thrown pretty well, and looked like Smith just able to get a piece of that and jog it loose. Carpenter also just got it. Very close. Just got it, and he almost actually caught the rebound. Now the Cougars go to that five wide out set that the Huskies had some problems with earlier. Huskies don't have the right personnel to combat this they got to get pressure because they got Aliaga covering a wide receiver there's the quick toss McKenzie the catch breaks a tackle he's got a first down and he'll go out of bounds at about the eight Big Brian Shu gets up injured a bit but he's going to be able to keep going well that little underneath delay route been so effective in this later stages of this football game again Aliaga is the guy that's lined up over McKenzie, and he's just, you know, he's not a defender uh, from a standpoint of one-on-one -on -one with a slot back. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be won by the slot back most times. Most of the times. Aliaga is a heck of an athlete, but he's just not used to it. He doesn't go through the drills. Comes down to execution here now. First and goal for the Cougars. Ball resting just inside the eight-yard line. Michael Black scored from this spot earlier. Let's see if the Cougars will go to the run. They will. Black trying to bounce it outside. Has Sanderson leading the way. Holding. As Black is hit at the one, we got a flag thrown back at the 11. And it's probably going to be a flag on the Cougs. Looks like McIndoo is going to be called for holding. Put on a pretty punishing block. Boy, that could be huge in this situation. Put him back on the 18-yard line. Actually, it's from the point of infraction, so it'd be just beyond the 20-yard line. It will still be first down, but as Sonny says, it should be back to the 21. And the Cougars will come back, it looks like, with that five wideout set. Holding offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. You know, there's uh, this, you can see it right here, Cleve. Yeah, he, he gets a hold of Burton, and you can see that uh, he's got that back hand. You know, that's tough, but. Uh, Officials right there, and he's going to make the judgment call. This time, the Huskies with a little better personnel as they make some changes as the Cougars go to the five wideouts. Here comes the pressure. Leaf gets it to McKenzie, dropped the ball. Is it going to be a completion? I think no, so. Now they rule it off. off. Took a while for the officials to make a call. They've been a little slow today on some of those calls coming from the sidelines. Almost a great grab. Ryan Leaf is reading the inside linebackers. If they come, he's dumping it to that area that they vacate. McKenzie did a pretty good job of getting in pos inside position, but wasn't able to hold on to that football. Might have been thinking touchdown before he had the ball wrapped up. See Jerry Jensen coming off the field for the Huskies, sprained an ankle earlier in the ball game. Kyle Roberts in now, and a little confusion by the dogs. Cougars have three plays to pick up 21 yards to keep the game alive. Leaf being pressured, steps up. He's sacked by Campbell. Second and 
So it's third down for the Cougars now from the 23-yard line. Ryan's hobbling a little bit as uh, Campbell might have come down on his right ankle that's been a little bit sore. Ryan trying to find somebody open is focused on the top of his screen. Campbell slips off the inside of Sanderson and chases him down. Good coverage in the secondary. You know, from the formation, the way it was set, I thought on the near side there was more confusion and coverage by the Huskies. But Ryan looks strong side, as you say. Five. five. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, five lights. We're all again. just getting excited up here. That's all. Cougars, third and goal from the 23. Huskies have already scored in overtime. Leaf steps up. Steps up, throws into the end zone from McWashington. Can't make the catch. It comes down to one play. Boy, those guys are tired out there. I'm telling you, you look at both sides of the line of scrimmage, and they're just really huffing and puffing. Well, it's got to get in the end zone. And looked like Ryan had a shot there to, to take some more time and wait for something to open up. But it's awful easy up here to <laughs> yeah, it's easy for us. sit around and say, well, why <laughs> don't you just sit back in your, in your uh, lounge chair and, and throw it? But looked like he might have hurried that one a little bit, trying to make the spectacular throw across his body. Cougars bring Michael Black and David Knuff back in the game. I'd have seven DBs stationed at the five-yard line. <laughs> All the marbles. Leaf has some time. Here comes the pressure for Carpenter. Out of bounds. Didn't get the foot down. The Huskies win it. Whoa, what a finish, boys. He was there, too, Cleet. Oh, no. He ran a great route. Had a shot to get that ball in there. And it was just a little bit outside of the sideline. And the Huskies will escape Boy, that's with not an so overtime <laughs> win. What a great fourth quarter for the Cougars. Mike Price. Coming over to shake hands, a great ball game, great comeback effort by the Cougs. Unfortunately for us, a little on the short side. Mike Price, Jim Lambright with the handshake. The Huskies survive in the Palouse in overtime, 31 to 24. You've been watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest.